So on today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, post-herbicides in corn and their tank mixes with fungicides. Um, commonly a question we get here around this time of the year. Yeah, Jared. So I think it's a good opportunity to talk about this. One of the reasons that we see this, this question come up is a lot of growers are looking for a, an additional step that they can look for to really push those yields beyond what their practice is that they're currently using. And one of those is throwing a fungicide in at that vegetative timing. Uh, we have seen some, some responses from that, some positive responses, for example, with Preaxor fungicide at that early vegetative timing in corn, uh, showing anywhere from a five to eight bushel response at times. So it is a viable option for throwing in there. And one of the best benefits is that typically at this time, you're already making a herbicide pass to control your weeds. So it's throwing in that extra benefit with kind of a, a free ride, right? You're not going out there with an additional pass uh, or anything like that. You're just throwing it in the tank. But that being said, there are some things that we got to keep in mind if we're going to utilize a practice like this to make sure that it's successful for both weed control and for trying to drive that additional yield. Yeah, and, and one of the things I commonly tell my growers that are asking about this type of combination is, you know, let's not sacrifice the purpose of the trip, right? We're, we're originally out there for weed control, and yeah, I want to drive yields, but if we miss that step and we don't get all our weeds killed, there's not many more opportunities in that late post window to go out and do it again. So we, we need to first and foremost on the post side, kill our weeds. So make sure we keep those dialed in and we're getting the proper coverage that we need to, to kill our weeds. And then if we get this free ride, that's great. So with that, you know, don't sacrifice nozzles. And I also say, just keep our gallonage up because when we start to use these fungicides in there, we want a lot of plant coverage on the crop this time. You know, we've talked about weed coverage on the weeds, but now we want to talk about it on the crop as well. So making sure we use gallonage to our advantage is really, really important. And the second thing is that we've noticed is if you've never done it before, you may want to do a jar test. You know, Preaxor is very good at mixing things, but you know, mixing order is important and make sure you understand how that goes in your sprayer will lead to a lot of success when we go to this, this type of application. So, you know, when it comes down to, to it as well, Mike, you know, the proper timing has a major effect on when we see this fungicide sure. response. And so, you know, I guess to be clear, we're not talking about a V2 or a V3 when the corn's only about that tall. Right. You know, we're looking at more of that taller corn stage, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see so much success from our, our tassel applications of fungicides that the closer we can get to that, I think there's added benefit to getting that fungicide app closer. So if we can find a way to make that happen where we're getting our herbicides out later or closer to that tassel timing, we're still within the cutoff, of course, but still getting that fungicide in there as well, I think that's where we're gonna increase our chances of seeing a positive response. And one example that we've seen is applications of status in corn with glyphosate, where we throw preaxor in because status does have that late cutoff uh, for somebody that has a planned application for that V5 to V8 growth stage, we've got, you know, you've got eight collars out, but you still have a couple of additional leaves coming out the top of that plant as well, uh, getting really close to those ear leaf coming out as well. So you're getting coverage on some of these important ones where you want to drive yield. And uh, that's where we can see some, some real success by pushing that later. Uh, and I, I like what you said, Jared, the, the focus here is still weed control, and that's not going to change with the status. Make sure you're using the right nozzles and things for that. Uh, and driving that coverage, but that's why we see that, that as such a good combination. And I want to reinforce a, a point you brought up there, Mike. I think one misnomer is that sometimes we can spray a corn plant that's, you know, maybe knee to mid thigh high and get protection all year long. But one of the things that we know about fungicides is they don't really move into tissue that's not there at the time of the application, whether that's in corn or soybeans, right? So that's why delaying that and not going after that V2 timing is important. We want to get those more important leaves. And that's why if you think about a V4 corn plant, which has got maybe four to five, maybe six total leaves exposed for that fungicide, you know, those bottom four leaves on your corn plant aren't the ones driving your yields at the end of the year. Those are the ones that fall off. Yeah, and they're not even going to be there. Exactly. So pushing it a little bit later gets us to those leaves that are exposed that are right below the ear leaf. And what we've typically seen in our research trials, even with these fungicide and herbicide combinations at that V5 to V8 timing, is it actually can help delay the onset of gray leaf spot because gray leaf spot comes up out of the residue. And so that's where I really feel like if you've got hybrids out there that are sensitive to gray leaf spot or corn on corn, you know, this is really maybe where you should look at some of these fungicides. And, and that status application and tank mix is really great. Um, but, you know, we talked a lot about status here, Mike, and I noticed you're wearing your Amazon Pro shirt. <laughs> what about the HPPDs? We got a lot of those we spray in corn as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the HPPD is a very popular option, uh, often paired with atrazine as well, because those herbicides work very well together, right? And folks have a lot of success in controlling their weeds in corn. And we definitely don't want to discourage anybody from going away from that program if it's been successful. But we do want to caution that if you are going out with a mix that involves an HPPD herbicide, uh, as well as atrazine, 
that we have seen from some research plots by throwing in a strobilurin fungicide in there with that. You do have a potential for crop response. Uh, typically what we see is a bit of a, a leaf burn or an oil flash type look. Uh, typically don't see any yield response or yield drag associated with that, uh, mostly cosmetic, but it's something that's still not very aesthetically pleasing and, and nobody likes to see burn on their corn, right? No, and to be clear too, Mike, just, it, it doesn't, it's not specific to any specific HPPD or specific strobilurin fungicide, sure. right? It's that combination of any stroby with any HPPD with the atrazine. So, you know, if you're really averse to seeing any of that oil flecking, um, we should either change to a status type program or you could also potentially remove one of those three components out of that other mix. But again, don't forget, we don't want to sacrifice our weed control. Absolutely. So again, I think we've got a really good option here to, to help drive our yields with, with fungicides, but let's not skip the step of weed control. And I think in summary, as we kind of bring this session to a close, you know, Look at what Preaxor and other fungicides that out of the BSF stable, including Veltima, which we didn't even really mention till now, can do for you in this early timing. I think they're great tank mix partners, but don't forget weed control is still our number one objective at this post timing in corn. Yeah, Jared, uh, couldn't agree more. And one thing that I wanna throw in there before we wrap this up is this still does not take the place of your tassel application of your fungicides either. That's still where we see that as the optimum timing, uh, the best chance to get a, a yield response or, or optimize that yield. Uh, this is just an additional way to try to drive yield beyond what you're already doing. Absolutely, Mike. Thank you. Hey folks, thanks for watching. The thoughts and comments expressed in these videos are the opinions of the Nozzlehead. Be sure to like and subscribe down below for new videos and content.